I hope you all are fine and today we have really very senior person who has really worked for many years nearly 32 years in forest department and achieved a milestone he is dr rajiv k shrivastav from tamil nadu 85 batch he has gra graduated from lucknow university and delhi university and he holds phd in forest fire forestry from fri dehradun he has served for 32 years and really held leadership positions in many of the in government of tamil nadu and ministry of environment and forest government of india he was chief conservator of forest joint managing director at tanti kunur uti and executive director chairman of swift coimbatore he has many innovations design specialized fire fighting forest fire fighting tools which is a very big necessity uh, during the summer season when there is a lot of fire and he developed fire forest fire disaster management center at mudumalai then there was uh, many of his education initiative he initiated courses like nursery plant and plantation technology high tech nursery plantation nursery and plantation uh, technology non wood forest products at fri dehradun his academic contributions are numerous he guided a student in doctorate program four students rather and visiting faculty at esteemed institutions like wii igfa and asci he is he is also an author author of med environmental medicinal plants forest seeds wildlife and forest management plants presented national and international papers also he is also editor editor of indian forester from september 2003 to 2007 he was acknowledged by then president 
Abdul Kalam. He is recipient of recipient of Bhag Mitra Award, Chaturvedi Award for Wildlife, two time NTCA Awardee, ICFRE Award for Biodiversity Con Conservation, Scotch Award for uh, Poverty Reduction and Gender Equality. Then project involvement, many of his projects are there. He was resource person for many projects at uh, ICFRE and he also worked on World Bank projects. Currently, he is Chief Advisor, Chennai Metro Rails. And here we are talking to Dr. Rajiv on wildlife and on tiger. And he is kind of expert in this because he got Bhag Mitra Award. So, of course, he is a Bhag Mitra. That means he is a friend of tiger. So, let's speak to him about uh, tiger. Uh, good, good evening. Uh, uh, Over to Dr. Rajiv. Yes, uh, evening. Dr. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Dr. Nopur Srivastava. It is really, I am delighted and honored that uh, you have invited me for this talk and I am overwhelmed and I am thankful for your audience, those who will be listening to all this. And uh, uh, it's a good opportunity for me and I extend my uh, gratitude and my this year. Thank I am thankful really for this that you have given me the opportunity to interact. With. Thank you. I would like to ask you a few questions uh, regarding tiger conservation and uh, I would also like you to answer a few questions related to tiger and how tiger are uh, you know seen with your perspective and you should also uh, you know how you uh, feel that it is uh, um, uh, you know you are you got this Bag Mitra award it is more uh, towards Royal Bengal tiger what is our exactly our tiger is termed as and what do you uh, i mean we are not very familiar with what species it is and how they are known so just let us know just tell us something about royal bengal tiger and rather asia asiatic tiger also there's there are many types of tiger so whichever is here in india just share something about it uh, it is uh, in India. It, it is uh, by large. It is a, a Bengal tiger, and I, I, I should say that the hundred percent is a Bengal tiger. And there are nine subspecies that has existed in the world. Uh, they were flourishing in the on this planet. Six species subspecies is now presently available, and this is known as Panthera tigris. And Panthera tigris is having so many subspecies. Um, you will be surprised that if how the tigris word has come. Tigris word has come from the Greek word. The tigris means the arrow. Because the tiger moves so fast, like an arrow, so that they have given it derived from the tiger, uh, Panthera tigris. So this is a very important uh, thing that we should admire this ti Bengal tiger. And uh, we are blessed uh, with this uh, wonderful species in India, which has flourished from the Siwali hills and uh, from the lower foothills of the Himalayas and the down up to the uh, Kanyakumari. And it is uh, flourishing very well. And the species which right now available in the world is Amur tiger, which is Siberian tiger, and then Thai Bengal tiger, then Indo Chinese tiger, then South Chinese tiger, then Malaysian tiger, then Javan tiger. These are the tigers which are existing right now. But three tiger subspecies is vanished from this planet. That is Javan tiger, Bali tiger, and one more tiger that is Persian tiger. These three tiger species, subspecies have vanished from this planet. So this is a credit for us and is a really a great uh, uh, this thing for our nation that we are flourishing with the that Bengal tiger, which is having the population of 75 percent of the total tiger present in the world so this is what i would like to say about the bengal tiger and oh. bengal tiger is a very magnificent and it is a wonderful species with a glittering stripes and uh, yellow stripes it looks magnificent and it is having the strength it is the embodiment of the strength and the power so you could feel that the four countries in the world 
are having tiger as a national animal india is one of them then bangladesh malaysia and another one is another one is your uh, i think uh, bangladesh malaysia india and south korea surprisingly south korea is also having this is as a national type but uh, i i went to south korea and i inquired from the people that why you people are keeping the tiger there is no tiger in south korea they told yes sir the tigers were existing in south korea and we feel proud and we have put into our culture in tradition and everywhere you will find the tiger picture so i it's a, it, it's importance of the tiger as a apex body in the world and i i am really a, i would like to say that it is really a wonderful species wow so amazing and uh, uh, what about uh, uh, white tiger can you just explain about white tiger what are they a white tiger at white tigers of india in odisha uh, and in west bengal it is a abrasion uh, it's out of the bengal tiger the white tigers have come and this is in odisha and uh, simli pal and all the white tigers has emerged out and they have been kept in the captivity and they have reared reared it it is a sub species of the bengal it is a, it is a is a part of the bengal okay wow that's so amazing and uh, tiger really represents strength and uh, really represent uh, courage and uh, uh, now the status you have explained what was its status 100 years back uh, uh madam one thing i would like to inform you that 100 years back the tigers in the country was uh, the population was approximately 1 lakh and the uh, at that time the uh, the the coverage of the forest in india was more than 40% 45% and uh, but the uh, um, but the rampant killing by poaching the people have killed it and for the commercial purposes are keeping this uh, uh, glorified tigers just in in their houses and their trophies in their houses people have killed mercilessly this tiger in the past and there was no law at that time people were getting a license to kill the tiger it was unfortunate even i have seen the pictures in the past in the british era when the 10 15 tigers were killed and people are putting their feet on the uh, body carcass of the tiger and they are giving their uh, photograph with a proud and it was a tradition at the time but really very unfortunate this magnificent animal were well, dwindled like anything their their species gone very bad the second reason which has given a blow to this population was the, the forest depletion of the forest in the country in india and uh, yeah, unfortunately we started with conservancy forest in the 19, 1864 but later on the forest depletion started and logging operation took place in the india the dominant trees fell down the middle level canopy and the lower canopy and the subspecies has gone out so that herbivores suffered a lot at the same time the pressure from the poachers and putting the pressure on killing this animal has given a blow serious blow so it has continued till the independence india got independence it was really a bad phase for this uh, in the sense of particularly the carnivores uh, whether it is a tiger whether it is a leopard whether it is a lion the people have killed very badly there were uh, also uh, uh, incidents of uh, uh, tigers in uh, circus they were using in circus and uh, recently not recently few years back there has been law uh, which has been uh, 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 i i couldn't get it by uh, government yeah would you say about that yeah uh, uh, that is why that's what i have mentioned it that the logging operation which has uh, which was a folly you can pay because at that time industrialization was going on railway was flourishing very well and so that the dominant trees were used as a sleeper for the railway track and the many of the uh, 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 scheduled timber species has been smuggled to the out, out of the country because like rosewood and terminalias and all they have gone out so that the, the depletion is one of the reason 
Second is the poaching, which I mentioned to you in the beginning that the, how the game license was given to the poach, uh, uh, to the persons. Those were from the elite class also. So that was the reason that it has taken a backseat and and the invasion of uh, your invasive species in the in the 20th century beginning or in the 19th century in the mid of 19th century onward the massive invasion of uh, uh, this your invasive species has reduced the forage ground which is not, which was not available for the herbivores because prey based population is very much required for the carnivores if the prey based population is good only then the carnivores population will be flourishing well these are the reasons which i have just explained to you uh what do you say about uh, smuggling of uh, small cubs uh, is it happening now also uh it has uh, because recently one tiger cub was caught in the chennai airport and uh, that is uh, very unfortunate the people were carrying it out and but the stringent rules are there that nobody can carry the cites is a international body which can which is enforcing the law and uh, most of the countries are now into it and they are trying to prohibit totally and but uh, unfortunately is still people they are crazy and they carry from one country to another country but uh, they don't know the rules and regulation and uh, we are now having a very stringent rule for that wow that that is amazing that the government is taking so many steps and what all other steps government is taking yeah. to control the population to increase the population of the tiger uh, i would like to tell you dr nopur that uh, after the independence uh, uh, 20 23 years uh, it has taken time but uh, fortunately uh, government of india has launched the project project tiger as one of many people they used to ask why project tiger why not the each species then i used to explain them it is a project tiger because tiger is the apex of the uh, up, uh, about this your food chain which is controlling the population of the herbivores and the tigers are the, at the top of the apex and uh, 1973 the project tiger started the main aim was to conserve this species, conservation of this species and improvement of the habitat. and that was taken into a big way kala sankla was uh, one of the person uh, one of the uh, leading uh, i can say that he, he was a really great person who has taken the cause and it has really flourished as well at that time i think inspector general was mr b p srivastava in government of india and it was taken in a well uh, in a perceived manner wow so many uh, many tiger reserves are there in india so what are the tot total number of uh, tiger reserves and which are the biggest one uh, where lot of tigers are found uh yeah there is tiger uh, there are 54 tiger reserves in the country right now and okay. uh, a recent survey and uh, recent uh, this your uh, uh, report Sensor. of the monitoring and evaluation okay or it has come out which has figured out 3167 tigers but uh, uh -huh. uh, later on when the valuation was done perfectly all right 3682 tigers which was declared on 29 july in the on the tiger day 29 july uh, 2023 it was declared and uh, that was the uh, uh, it's a really a marvelous thing and i would like to inform you that uh, the annual increase rate is 6.1% it's a quite good and yes. uh, you will be uh, surprised to know uh, dr nopur that uh, right now india is having 75% of the total tigers available in the world we are proud to have a 75% tigers in the world 75% yes. and yes. it is a lot of efforts have been put since yes. 2000 uh, uh, 1973 onward and rather 2006 onward wow that is amazing and amazing statistics that we are we have achieved a milestone in uh, conserving tigers and uh, uh, quite a big number uh, it has increased from 25% to 35% that is amazing increase and uh, i should uh, uh, really congratulate all the forest personnel who are working 
day and night to conserve tigers so uh, i would also so like so kind of yes, yes. and uh, uh, why tiger conservation uh, is important that you have shared but what are the steps actually are taken by these field officers who are working day and night in the uh, forests in the tiger river reserves and I, you are absolutely right and i do agree with you it is a, it is the combined effort of uh, all the foresters and even i would like to give the credit to the anti poaching watcher is the lowest unit which patrol in the forest area in 24 hours and uh, they are the main front line uh, protector of the tiger species and uh, when the uh, credit uh, when uh, when the government of india has given fund for maintaining this anti poaching watcher camps and i was that was the beginning because now the anti poaching uh, watchers are getting a uh, somewhat reasonable good salary and uh, they are protecting and i would like to give the full credit to these anti poaching watchers those who are living inside the uh, inside the forest very interior which is a, a very great challenge because there is a threat of poachers there is a threat from the wild animals but they are living and they are patrolling the area without fear and they have brought this uh, number uh, which is remarkably very high it's a credit goes to all frontline staff uh i have uh, some information that these anti poaching squads are uh, appointed from amongst the tribal uh, population who are living inside the forest is it true yeah actually the forest department uh, is emphasizing the person those who are living inside the forest area or the adjoining area they are having better knowledge because they are they know the terrain very well they are how to patrol and which area is needed to be patrolled and they are very sturdy because they lived there in the forest that the forest was their life they are from morning to the evening they were they they have taken as its home so they know and they can smell very well if it is a tiger presence is there or elephant presence is there or bear presence is there they can smell it out and they can tell that this is the the animal is very nearby and they are having that skill particularly i have got an experience in tamil nadu there are tribes they are having a rich experience of smelling the animals and they can tell just sir uh, 500 meter the elephant is nearby please don't go there so it is a remarkable skill which they are having i think i think we give credit to them thank you wow wow that is really amazing that these uh, tribes have been uh, uh, absorbed into the forest department and they are really working day and night with the uh, forest personnel and for the forest so here i would like to ask which is the youngest tiger of the which has been declared as tiger reserve recently uh, recently uh, ranipur okay that is in chitrakoot is taken in uttar pradesh that is the okay. 54th tiger reserve which has been declared recently although there is no tiger but the tiger there is no resident tiger but the okay. tigers are visiting that area so now the concept has come there is a tomato population when the tiger number is increasing tiger is a territorial animal they mark their territory even they when the cubs uh, they grow a more than 2 years old the mother will send them out and the father will also will be enemy to that so they they will mark their own territory that it is known as meta population which goes out and uh, they have gone to the ranipur and they have come from the panna tiger oh. the panna tiger reserve is the breeding ground for the tiger right now which was having no tiger around 15 years back but the tiger has come up back in that land and the tigers are now uh, reaching to the other part so ranipur is one of the tiger reserve where the tigers are visiting often so it is a great wow. thing which uh, uh, tiger conservationists are thinking government is thinking in that line the tigers wherever they are visiting they are occupying the area new areas can be declared as a tiger here i would like to ask you that since you have said you have mentioned that from panna reserve to rani uh, uh, tiger reserve uh, the tiger has traveled how do you track these tiger whether they have been some track tracking uh, instrument or something which has which is uh, being used for tracking these tiger movement or what you use for uh, tracking the movement of the tigers 
there are two methods, Dr. Rupert. Uh, one is that uh, you can put a tiger collar and the tiger can travel and it can be located and it can be find it out. Other thing is that uh, the tigers which are moving in a particular tiger reserve, we are having the camera trapping. So, you know, we are having the, the lines in our palm. We are having lines in our palm. Similarly, the tigers are having stripes on the body. And each tiger differs from each other uh, with the stripes. And uh, the, uh, the camera trap uh, in the Panna Tiger Reserve, which has been put together, and the tiger has gone to the uh, Ranipur, it is again camera trap. And the same tiger which has been reported in Panna and is found in Ranipur, they can assess that, okay, it has traveled. Similar wow. case, when I was a field director, I remember, Mudu Malai in 2007, when the tiger started moving to Satyamangalam. Once upon a time, tiger in Satyamangalam were out. But 2007 onwards, the tiger started moving. Now, you will be surprised to know that Satyamangalam has got the best award for the X2, then doubling the number of the tigers in 2000, wow. I think, 2021, if I am not mistaken. They have got double numbers. So, the tigers are only thing they need a good protection. And you have to be alert. Poachers should be not allowed to enter, and you have to be uh, have a good uh, intelligence network. And I think the tigers can boom again because they are the prolific breeder, in my opinion. They breed uh, whenever they breed, they give three cups to four cups, and the survival rate initially it was one to two cups. Now it has been found that the three cups are generally been reported in most of the cases where the tiger. Is so I am confident the tigers are breeding very well and the credit goes to the lines. That is really good number. That is that shows that the uh, mother child uh, uh, they are uh, really surviving very well and they are well taken care of. Uh, one thing you have said that they have. The reason the is. Uh, the, yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, the reason behind this is that. Uh, the strong protection of uh, the area, yes. whether it is a carnivore, whether it is a herbivore, we uh -huh. are uh, keeping the pictures away and the foraging ground has been increased, water bodies have been increased because of the efforts of the government and a lot of funding has been poured into that project tiger and uh, really it is, has, has worked out very well and um, the foraging ground has increased, herbivore's population has increased, the tigress which was supposed to go for 10 kilometers to fetch the flesh for their cups. Now she has to go only for two, three kilometers, four kilometers. Wow. So that I have witnessed in Mudumalai. Mudumalai, I have witnessed the five kilometers. As wow. per the record of scientist data and all, they say a, tie, a tigress traveled for 10 kilometers, 25 kilometers. But I have witnessed the tigress has confined to only three to four kilometers because of the availability of the abundance of food. Abundance of uh, uh, spotted deer, summer, no. all kind of food was available. For them. Wow, that's great. And uh, uh, there's one more thing uh, that I would like to ask is, uh, normally, as you said, there are stripes, uh, identifiable stripes. They are different. They have different uh, stripes. Individual tigers have different kind of stripes. Similarly, when you yeah. are uh, um, surveying the forest area you also check for the pug marks they are also different from each tiger like different uh, tigers have different pug marks that is also I think it's a very particular point. Uh, you are absolutely right until 2006 we were doing the pug mark survey and but the pug mark survey is not giving the correct figure the reason is it depending upon the soil the pug mark, if you are putting the same tiger is putting on the wet soil, it will be bigger because of the wet soil. Okay. If it is a dry soil, the pug mark will be less. So how you can, the you can, can't individual is a separate. But with the stripes, with the camera trapping in the left and the right stripes, and there is a depository of all this data in the WII, which is okay. having all data. So that wow. they are having, and they analyze, in there, they are having a package for the particularly module for that, and they analyze that. It is a very science. Wow, that's amazing! Amazing science. Another thing is, uh, 
as you are managing many wildlife sanctuaries and uh, uh, there are core area and there is a outer area where people are not allowed in the core area how do you explain this uh, kind of wildlife management of the sanctuary tiger reserve sanctuaries uh you see the tiger reserve we are having a concept of the core area and buffer area uh all the activities are banned in the core area. the core area is not it uh, you nobody is allowed there but buffer area certain rights are allowed even you can go for your grazing and, and all your collection of ntfp and all it is allowed so that the public should not be annoyed for that but the core area we are keeping exclusive for the development and conservation wow that's amazing and how do you explain the influx of the tourists and their impact on the sanctuary and the forests and the animals which influx sorry tourists tourists the tourist tourist influx is actually people who come and visit uh, that, yeah yeah that is why the ntca national tiger conservation authority has come out and there was an order from the supreme court also that you have to define the tourism zone you cannot take the tourist into the core area or anywhere you wish, wish to take it but uh, uh, that is the reason that uh, uh, we are controlling our uh, tourist population inside the forest area because tigers are moving inside the forest area. they are also having their private life so we have to give respect to the animals for this thing and uh, we are having a, a proper tourist zone and and that has been defined in most of the tiger reserve areas wow that's but i will okay. request that uh, tourists should it should not be make that uh, the tourists uh, when the tiger is moving and the, all the vehicles are coming and just looking at that it is not good because you are changing the mentality or psychology of the tiger it is not it's not a good thing we have to uh, restrict we should not if you are lucky you can see the tiger on the way but one should not make it a show it should not be a tiger show um i would like to ask something really different uh, your experience in management of tiger reserves any experience that you feel close to when you are managing the tiger reserve uh there were many issues and it has come when i was a uh, project tiger in uh, i was field director in mudumalai uh, and when i took the charge as a field director the many people were against the project tiger and they came on the street in the lakhs in gudlur town and all those things and uh, they were opposing this project tiger they told that the field director has brought tigers from outside and they have released the tigers and tomorrow it will be definitely it is going to be a disaster for the area then what i did i created a lot of awareness i have came on the net uh, and i have uh, the local cable tvs and i have given my interviews nothing to be worried we don't have that much stringent rules which you are presuming which you are thinking it is not like that and we talk to them and we have debate with them and then they we uh, i i was lucky that uh, nothing happened that and the tiger reserve has come into force and the later on now the mudumalai i am really proud to say that the same mudumalai tiger reserve where i was the first first field director is now got this your um, award and uh, oh. elephant whisper and uh, it is a really a, a great moment for us that to celebrate that the how yes. this is a, it is a proud moment that Yes, congratulations to all the forest personnel I mean, who are uh, working there in Madhubalai who got yes, this award. Even, even it is yes, because it is not the work of a one officer. Yes. Other we uh, all the officers those who serve from very beginning have put one is brick on the in the development and they have created a strong wall. The wall is not created by a just one by one. It is created by many people who has put their soul and their hard work to that. and that is the reason now today the tiger reserve mudumalai is come up to that stage wow amazing amazing and you were one of them and we are proud of you to speaking to you uh, so nice and, of you uh, and thank you for your kind words and, uh, and it is all you see the tiger which uh, i always love it is always with me wow. and 
I keep in my study room. And he is, a, I love them. I, they are really wonderful. Creatures. Any experience you would like to I love to from share. the core of my heart. Yes, I would like to ask something really which is close to your heart, some experience which you feel that uh, it uh, it has created a life-changing experience for you regarding the tiger. Any experience that you have faced, any experience, any encounter that you had with tiger in the wild? Uh, I would like to tell you one story when I was a field director posted in Mudumalai. So uh, as everybody is crazy to see the tiger and uh, uh, my range officer informed me that a tiger is coming and one kill is there of summer. It is lying in the forest and the tiger will definitely come in the night. I told, okay, I could see the behavior. I want to see the tiger, how it is, is eating and all those things. I put the machan. I told it should not be disturbed. When it was in a buffer area and a periphery area, and uh, I sat on the machan in the night and uh, I was watching and the tiger could not come uh, the whole night and morning four five o'clock I got down from the machan and then I took the I swear that I told that hereafter I will never see the tiger I will never go to see the tiger because the tiger is deprived of the food because the whole night did not come because he might have smelled the human presence around and that has changed my mind. I told nothing doing. Nobody is allowed. And tiger and the wild animals should not be disturbed. And that is the that was because I was I became close because he could not take food in the night. I felt it very bad. Oh. So that was always really? I carry. And until today's, I I remember that day and uh, I feel that nobody should disturb the animal. That nobody should disturb that. Amazing. And you being a forest officer, really you are so soft at heart. You felt so much for the uh, this uh, beautiful uh, jungle uh, tiger that, that they couldn't come just because they smelled you. Oh my God, that is so amazing. And uh, again, I would like to they ask you very something. Very yeah. I will like it, to say. Yeah, it made you I emotional. Like they are very intelligent. Very, very yeah, yes. because we yeah. have to think of them and we yes. should give all supporting, caring and loving hand to the yes. conservation of these animals. The mute population who cannot speak out, we yes. have to stand for them. They yes. cannot speak. So true, so true. Anything that you remember as a happy moment when you saw the magnificence of the tiger? Uh, one uh, moment I know, I was uh, just crossing it uh, the, across the my tiger reserve. In the evening, it was drizzling, and uh, there was a call of uh, the spotted deer, and I could make it out. The tiger is nearby because the continuous call of the spotted deer herd was there, and I was going towards the Tapekadu, and suddenly. I saw a tiger came in a semi-circle at a very fast speed and he picked up a, a spotted deer in between the legs and went into inside the lantana bush. Even my ranger told me, sir, watch it. It will, you can, you want to watch, I don't know. It has taken his, his kitty and now I don't want to disturb. I don't want to, please move on. I have seen, whatever I have seen, I have captured in my eyes. It will be thrown out in my eyes. That was a magnificent, the tiger, with the power of the tiger I have seen in front of my eyes. He has taken uh, the 200 kg of that, uh, 150 kg approximately, I can't assess now, but he has taken it between the leg and moved inside. What a power and what a jump, what a leap of a tiger. It was really fantastic. I can't wow. forget that. You are so lucky and... Uh, the blessing of God is there that you have seen the magnificence of the tiger just hunting for its food and that is amazing and that is so beautiful. I can see from your eyes it must have been a real beautiful experience and life-changing experience for you. And uh, it was a yes, real it is, Yeah, it is very rare to see tiger in action. They will just walking by but in action you have seen it that is really you are lucky being. And uh, 
may god bless you for that and i would so, love to now ask you your last question i know you yes. must be um, in hurry to go for another uh, session or another interview so first i would like to ask you the last question what message you have for the world for tiger and the conservation i would like to say these glittering stripes are bouncing back now and we are confident that uh, definitely their number will be increasing in future too i would like to request the each and every person that please extend your loving caring and sharing hands so that we can we could protect not only tigers with all creatures which are existing around us they are poor creatures they want our kind heart support and we have to support that whether it is butterfly because everybody is playing in the ecosystem their role and they are sustaining in the ecosystem for the survival of others so we have to support that and i like i would like to request that please support and conserve each and every species including the tigers thank you very much thank you so much you have been so uh, frank and so open about the tigers and their conservation and their life and your life with them and so many things which will be uh, you know a learning lesson for many people around the world in india also around the world also where tigers are there and people from where tigers are not there they are funding tiger uh, conservation Uh, projects and uh, i hope everyone each and every one should help these magnificent being and bring them to the fore and with this i would like to thank you dr rajiv shivasa for being with us on this platform thank you very much and namaste thank you dr nobo thank you for giving me a opportunity thank you very much thank you from my tiger side up thank you thank you thank you tigers <laughs> uh thank you one minute